Hi, I'm River Gibbs. Today, when someone in my generation wants entertainment or comedy, all we have to do is go to the internet. But in my grandparents' generation, the superhighway to entertainment was radio. In this series, we'll look at the radio programs that young America loved the best. One of the greatest shows in the history of old-time radio was not, on the surface, a show created for young people. At times, it was very much an adult program, but now and then, the venerable Lux Radio Theater would broadcast a real family favorite. On those nights, families would gather around the radio to hear the show. The Lux Radio Theater was aired for two decades. It featured live performances of famous movies, often with the original cast pared down to a one-hour format with, of course, time out for the sponsor's commercials. In 1939, weeks before Walt Disney's Pinocchio came to movie screens, millions of boys and girls tuned in to hear a preview on the Lux Radio Theater. Now, let's go back to Christmas Day, 1939, as the Lux Radio Theater presents Pinocchio. The Lux Radio Theater brings you the new Walt Disney feature, Pinocchio. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. This is a night that weaves a spell over the world, a time of reverence and rejoicing, of family reunions and storytelling by the fire. On this enchanted night, we can all believe implicitly in stories like Pinocchio. It's the spirit of all small boys who'd rather look for adventure than go to school. Now, just put yourself in the place of Geppetto. Suppose you had made a puppet, a little wooden boy, and then all of a sudden, the puppet began to talk and move about like a real boy. <laughs> I believe you'd be ready for almost anything to happen. And that's the best frame of mind I can suggest for you now. As the Lux Radio Theater curtain goes up on Act One of Walt Disney's Pinocchio. Christmas night. Dinner is over. And you're settled comfortably in your favorite chair beside the fireplace, gazing dreamily into the flames. You're relaxing for the first time today, and you've made a solemn resolution that nothing shall move you from this place for at least three hours. You won't be surprised if, at a time like this, that burnt ember on the hearth should move a little, for you've just noticed that it isn't an ember at all, a cricket. And not an ordinary cricket, either. He wears a beaver hat, and in his hand, he carries a furled umbrella. He sits looking at you out of his large, rather mournful eyes. And then, just as if it were the most natural thing in the world, he begins to sing. If your heart is in your dream, no request is too extreme. When you wish upon a star, your dream. I'll bet a lot of you folks don't believe that about a wish coming true, do you? Well, I didn't either. But of course, I'm just a cricket singing my way from heart to heart. But let me tell you what made me change my mind. One night, a long time ago, my travels took me to a quaint little village. It was a beautiful night. The stars were shining like diamonds, high above the roofs of that sleepy old town. Pretty as a picture. There wasn't a soul to be seen. The only sign of life was a lighted window in the shop of a woodcarver named Geppetto. So I hopped over and looked in. Inside, there was a nice, cheerful fire burning. Kind of a shame to see it going to waste. So what do I do? I go in. Well, sir, you never saw such a place. The most fantastic clocks you ever laid your eyes on. And all carved out of wood. And cute little music box, each one a work of art, and shelf after shelf of toys. And then something else caught my eye. Sitting up on the work table was a puppet, 
You know, one of those marionette things, all strings and joints. Cute little feller he was, too. All dressed up just like a real boy. But just then I heard a noise. It was the old woodcarver, Geppetto, and his cat, Figaro. I jumped behind the clock. Well, now it won't take much longer. Just a little more paint and he's all finished. I think he'll be all right, don't you, Figaro? Meow. Sure, I paint a smile on his face, see? <laughs> that makes a big difference. <laughs> now, I have just the name for him. Pinocchio. Do you like it, Figaro? No. No? Well, we'll leave it to Little Woodenhead. Do you like it, Woodenhead? That settles it. Pinocchio it is. We'll try you out. Music professor. Well, sir, was I surprised. Every music box in the place began to play, and Geppetto made the puppet dance. Quite a sight, yes, sir. Go play your part. Bring a little joy to every heart. Do do you know, and yet it's true, that I might be proud of you. Little wooden feet and best of all, and then you wouldn't see me in case you fall. <laughs> My little wooden head. Oh, you are a cute little fella. And that smile. Well, it must be getting late. I wonder what time it is. Ten o'clock sharp. Ten o'clock. Uh-oh. Come on, we'll go to bed. <laughs> Look at him, Figaro. He almost looks alive. Wouldn't that be nice if he was a real boy? Oh, well... Come on, now we go to sleep. Oh, Figaro, I forgot to open the window. Would you do it? Thank you, Figaro. Oh, Figaro, look up there in the sky, see? The wishing star. Starlight, star bright, first star I see tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might have the wish I make tonight. Figaro, do you know what I wish? I wish that my little Pinocchio might be a real boy. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? Just think. A real boy. A very lovely thought, but not at all practical. And with that, the old woodcarver turned over and went to sleep. Well, it was a nice night for it, so... But just as I got settled in a comfortable position, the room was suddenly filled with starlight. Yes, sir. Starlight. Down in a long beam straight from that wishing star. And coming down along that beam, as I live and breathe, was a fairy. Yes, sir, a beautiful blue fairy. When you wish upon a star, shining brightly from above, anything your heart desires will Good, Geppetto. You have given so much happiness to others. You deserve to have your wish come true. Little puppet made of pine, wake. The gift of life is thine. Why, I can move. I can talk. And, and I can walk. Yes, Pinocchio. I've given you life because tonight Geppetto wished for a real boy. Am I a real boy? No, Pinocchio. To make Geppetto's wish come true will be entirely up to you. Up to me? Prove yourself brave, truthful, and unselfish, and someday you will be a real boy. A real boy? That won't be easy. But you must learn to choose between right and wrong. Your conscience will tell you. What are conscience? Huh? Con con what are conscience? I'll tell you. A conscience is that still, small voice that people won't listen to. That's just the trouble with the world today. You see... Are uh, you my conscience? Who, me? Would you like to be Pinocchio's conscience? Well, I... Uh, I, uh... <laughs> uh mm -hmm. Very well. What is your name? Uh, oh, oh, uh, uh, Cricket's the name. Jiminy Cricket. Neil, Mr. Cricket. Oh, uh, uh, well, uh, be a little careful with that wand now. Uh, easy does it, my lady. I.W. Pinocchio's Conscience. Lord High Keeper of the Knowledge of Right and Wrong. Counselor in Moments of Temptation and guide along the straight and narrow path. Arise, Sir Jiminy Cricket. Oh, oh, oh. oh, look at my clothes. All brand new. 
Say, that's pretty swell. But, uh, uh, don't you get a badge or something? I shouldn't wonder. <laughs> Make it a gold one? Perhaps. But I must go now. Remember, Pinocchio, be a good boy. And always let your conscience be your guide. Goodbye. Goodbye, my lady. Goodbye. Well, uh, Pinocchio, uh, uh, maybe you and I had better have a little heart-to-heart talk. Why? Well, you want to be a real boy, don't you? Uh Uh-huh. All right, sit down, son. Now, you see, the world is full of temptations. Temptations? Yes, temptations. Uh, You see, there are the wrong things that seem right at the time. But uh, uh, even though the right things may seem wrong, uh, sometimes... uh, Sometimes the wrong things uh, may be right at the uh, wrong time, or, or uh, vice versa. <clears throat> Understand? Uh-huh. But I'm going to do right. Add a boy, Pinocchio, and I'm going to help you. And any time you need me, you know, just whistle. Like this. Like this? Oh, no, no. Try it again, Pinocchio. Like this? No, son. Now listen. it? Oh. When you get in trouble and you don't know right from wrong, give a little whistle. Give a little whistle. When you meet temptation and the urge is very strong, give a little whistle. Give a little whistle. Not just a little squeak. Pucker up and blow. And if your whistle's weak, yell, Right. Take the straight and narrow path, and if you start to slide, give a little whistle. Give a little whistle. And always let your conscience be your guide. <laughs> and always let your conscience be your guide. Look out, Pinot. Don't dance on the table. You'll fall off. You'll... Oh, I knew it. I knew it. Oh, yes. It's me. Pickle. There's somebody in here. Whoever you are, where are you? Here I am. Pinocchio, how did you get down on the floor? I fell down. Oh, you did. You... Oh, you're talking. Uh-huh. No, 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 no. Yes, and I can move, too. No, 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 no. You, you can't. I, I'm dreaming in my sleep. Uh, where's water? Uh, a pail of water. That will wake me up. <laughs> now we see who is free. Go on. Say something. <laughs> Gee, your buddy, do it again. You do talk. Yes, the blue fairy. Kid. The blue fairy. Uh huh. And, and I got a conscience. A conscience. And someday I'm going to be a real boy. A real boy. It's my wish. It's come true. Figaro, look, he's alive. He can talk. Say hello to Figaro. Hello to Figaro. See, didn't I tell you? Isn't he smart? Oh, my little wooden head. My little Pinocchio. We'll make you very, very happy here for you. Oh, 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 you're always wanted in life. Come on now, it's late. You, you, you must close your eye and go to sleep. Why? Everybody has to sleep. Figaro goes to sleep and, and I go to sleep. And besides, tomorrow you've got to go to school. Why? And get smart. Why? Oh, because. Oh, Good night, my little Pinocchio. Good night. And maybe, maybe someday you'll call me father, huh? Sure. Good night, father. Oh, that's fine. That's fine. Good night, son. Oh, look, father, look! Now wait. Stand still now while I put on your coat. What are those out on the street? Huh? Oh, those. They are your schoolmates, girls and boys. Of course, they're going to school. Now, here's an apple for the teacher, and you are ready to go. Now, run along. Goodbye, Father. Goodbye, son. Well, and where was I while this was going on? Folks, I'm ashamed to tell you. I was asleep. A fine conscience I turned out to be. I should have been right with you. You see, I'd heard about a couple of bad characters around that town. One fellow by the name of Honest John. And say, was he a bad one? He was as sharp as a fox. Yes, sir. Looked like a fox, too. Say, come to think of it, I guess he was a fox. And, well, you see, this honest John had a stooge by the name of Gideon, a dumb alley cat. And between the two of them, they were a pretty tricky pair. I tell you, I just shivered all over. Imagine the innocent little Pinocchio on his way to school with honest John and Gideon roaming. 
Oh, Gideon, my boy, listen. The merry laughter of little children wending their way to school. <laughs> Thirsty little minds drink to the fountain of knowledge. <laughs> ah, school, a noble institution. Would this stupid world be without school? <laughs> well, 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 Gideon, look at that billboard. Spamboli and his marionette. Hmm. So that old rascal's back in town, eh? <laughs> Remember, Giddy, the time I tied strings on you? Passed you off as a puppet? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> we nearly put one over on the old gypsy that time, eh? <laughs> good morning. Ah, good morning, good morning. Well, look at that, Gideon. A little wooden boy. Ho, ho! Now, who ever heard of a wooden boy? A live puppet without strings. <laughs> Gideon, look. A live puppet without strings. Why, a thing like that ought to be worth a fortune to someone. But who? Now, let me see. Spamboli. Why, that fat old faker would give his eye to... Listen, Giddy. If we play our cards right, we'll be on easy street. Or my name isn't Honest John. Quick, after that boy. <laughs> here, 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 stupid. Put that mallet away. Don't be crude. Let me handle this. Oh, my little toddler. Well, permit me to introduce myself. J. Worthington Powell, fellow. A fine day, isn't it? Yes, sir. Well, well, well. Quite a scholar, I see. Look at his books, Kitty. A man of letters. I'm going to school. School? Oh, yes. Uh, then you, uh, you haven't heard of the easy road to success? Uh-uh. No? Huh. I am speaking, my boy, of the theater. Bright lights, music, applause. Fame! Fame? Yes, and with that personality, that profile, that physique, why, he's a natural-born actor, eh, Giddy? <laughs> but I'm going... Straight to the top. Why, I can see your name in lights. Light six feet high. What is your name? Pinocchio. Pinocchio. P-I-N-U. P-I-N-O-U-O. <laughs> but we're wasting precious time. Come. On to the theater. Light is the big, and that's the right for me. A high silk hat and a silver cane, a watch of gold with a diamond chain. I did a day, and that's the right for gay. It's great to be a celebrity, and that's the right for me. I did a day, and that's That's when I finally caught up to him. The three of them, arm in arm, walking down the street. Just as they were passing by, I grabbed hold of Pinocchio and pulled him behind a tree. Pinocchio, it's me, Jiminy Cricket. Oh, hello, Jiminy. Where did he go? I have Pinocchio. Pinocchio. Ooh. Don't answer him, Pinocchio. Now listen. But Jiminy, I'm going to be an actor. All oh, right, oh. son. Take it easy now. Ooh. Remember what I said about temptation? Uh-huh. Well, Ooh. that's him. That feller there. Oh, oh no, Jimmy. That's Mr. Honest John. Honest John? All right, then. Here's what we'll tell him. You can't go to the theater. Say thank you Ooh. just the same. You're sorry. Ooh. But you've got to go to school. Uh-huh. All right. Atta boy. Here they come, Pinocchio. Now you tell them. Pinocchio! Oh! Well, well, there you are. Well, now let me see. Where were we? Ah, yes. On to the theater. Okay. Goodbye, Jiminy. Goodbye. Goodbye? Huh? Goodbye? Hey, wait a minute. Pinocchio, hey, come back. Wait a minute. Hi, Jiminy. An act is right for me. A wax mustache and a fever coat, a pony cart and a billy goat. I did it again. I had to break the fun. You wear your hair in a pompadour. You ride around in a coach and four. You stop and buy a candy store. And next thought, life for me. <laughs> In just a moment, Mr. DeMille brings you Act Two of Pinocchio. In a charming home out in Westwood Park this morning, a very pretty scene took place. The sun was pouring through the long, broad windows of a pleasant living room, lighting up the Christmas tree in its welter of packages. The family was gathered round, John and Peg, and their two small children eagerly opening presents. Oh, 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 I got a choo-choo, Mommy. Now I can see Mom. Children, children, not quite so much noise. Any more presents? Any more presents? Just, just one more, and it's for Mother. Thank you, John. Oh, Mommy, I'm going to do it. What is it? Look at the box. I bet it's a ring. It is. Oh, John, you angel. A beautiful pearl ring. Read the card, Mommy. For the lovely hand of the loveliest woman I know. John, darling, I think I'm going to kiss you. 
<laughs> but you really shouldn't have done it, dear. Well, well, then you shouldn't have such beautiful hands, sweetheart. They ask for jewels. <laughs> and me, a staid old married woman. Oh, just a darling little homebody. <laughs> Who washes dishes every day. Now, that, Sally, was a homey loving scene that might happen anywhere. You know, Mr. Ruick, I don't believe there's anything that touches a woman quite so much as knowing her husband adores her. His love is so precious. And made up of so many little things, Sally. Yes, her hands, for instance. In a way, the appearance of a woman's hands doesn't seem important. But oh, how very important it really is. One of the big little things that makes for happiness. And that's why Lux Flakes are so important an item in the household. For Lux helps a woman do dishwashing and other soap and water tasks, and yet helps keep her hands looking dainty and feminine. So few of us can afford maids. But that's no reason why we should look like grudges. And Lux Flakes enable us to do our own work, wash our own dishes, and yet help our hands stay attractive. And now, Mr. Ruick, I'd like to say to our audience that I hope they've all had and are having a very happy Christmas. You wish, Sally, in which I join you. Now our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act Two of Pinocchio. As we dream beside the fire, where the flames cast dancing patterns on the hearth, we wait politely for our friend the cricket to continue his story. He's paused, but now he rouses himself, and pulling a red silk bandana from his coattail pocket, he blows his cricket nose. Well, it was my fault. I should have known better. Maybe if I'd been with Pinocchio when he first met those two Sharpies, I could have stopped it. I went to the show that night to see him. I hid in a tree near the wagon they used as a stage. And near the end of the performance, Stromboli came out. Ladies and gentlemen, concluded the performance of this great show, Stromboli, the master showman. That's me, and by special permission of the management, that's me too, Uncle Salonacci, is presented to you something you will absolutely refuse to believe. Introducing the only marionette who can sing and dance absolutely without the aid of strings. I hope so. The only and one Pinocchio. What a builder. Go ahead, Pinocchio. Make a fool of yourself. Then maybe you listen to your conscience. To make me fat, make me brown, I hit strings, but now I'm free. There are no strings on me. I hold the Mario, that's the only way to be. I want the world to know, nothing ever bothers me. I got no strings, so I have fun. I'm not tied up to anyone. They got strings, but you can see, there are no strings on me. Huh. Well, I like it. He's a success. Maybe I was wrong. Well, I guess he won't need me anymore. What does an actor want with a conscience anyway? Goodbye, Pinocchio. Goodbye. Goodbye. I got a little string for the little brain. I buy a new suit and I'm going to get a cane. I eat the best and I drink the champagne. I got the new strings on me. 185. 195. Bravo, Pinocchio. They like me, huh? Oh, 200. You are sensational. You mean I'm good? 300. You are colossal. Does that mean I'm an actor? Sure, I will push you in the public's eye. Your face, she will be on everybody's tongue. Watch this. Counterfeit. Nonsense to the Ramey of the Bayern. Oh, for you, my little Pinocchio. Here, I give it to you. Oh, for me? Gee, thanks. I'll run right home and tell my father. Oh, 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 yeah. Oh, oh sure. Going home to your father. <laughs> That is a very comico. I'll be back in the morning. Come here. Be back in the morning. Going home. <laughs> there. This will be your home. This a nice little cage where I can find you always. No. No, no. Yes, yes, yes. To me you are belonging. We will tour the world. A Paris. A London. A Monte Carlo. Constantinople. No, no. no. Yes. We start tonight. You will make lots of money for me. <laughs> and when you are growing too old, you will make good firewood. Let me out of here. 
My God, yeah. You can't see me. Hey, shut him up. Before I knock you silly. Good night, my little wooden gold mine. No, no. Wait, let me out. I'll tell my father. sitting by the roadside in the rain when Stromboli's wagon passed by. And I felt pretty blue. I thought, well, there he goes, sitting in the lap of luxury, the world at his feet. Oh, well, I can always say I knew him when. I'll just go out of his life quietly. I would like to wish him luck, though. Sure. Why not? I'll catch the wagon and slip under the door. Pinocchio. Pinocchio. It's me. Your old friend, Jenny. Remember? <laughs> oh, gee, am I glad to see you. Hey, what are you doing in that cave? What did he do to you? Oh, he was mad. He said he'd push my face in everybody's eyes. Yeah? Is that so? Oh, listen, he stopped the wagon. Now, don't you worry, son. I'll have you out of here in no time at all. But how can you? There's, there's a great big lock on the oh, cage. What's the lock to a guy like me? Didn't you ever hear picking them open? Jiminy Valentine, my friends call me. Of course, I... <laughs> Kind of rusty. You mean you can't open it? I'm I'm afraid not. It'll take a miracle to get you out of that cage. Hey, look up there, Pinocchio. That star. See? It's the wishing star. And here comes the lady. The blue fairy. Oh, what will she say? Well, I tell her. Well, you might tell her the truth. Quiet. Why, Pinocchio. <laughs> Hello. And Sir Jim. Well, this is a pleasant surprise. <laughs> Pinocchio. Why didn't you go to school? School? Go ahead and tell her. I was going to school till I met somebody. Met somebody? Uh, Two big monsters with with big green eyes. Hey, Pinocchio, what's happening to your nose? Monsters? Weren't you afraid, Pinocchio? No, ma'am. They tied me in a a big sack. Pinocchio, your nose is growing. So they tied you in a big sack. And where was Sir Jiminy? Jiminy, uh, they they put him in a little sack. Pinocchio! I tell you, your nose is branching out like a tree. What did you escape? They chopped me up into firewood. Oh, oh, look, my nose. What's happened? Looks like a plum tree to me. Perhaps you haven't been telling the truth, Pinocchio. Perhaps. Oh, but I have every single word. Oh, please, please tell me. I'm, I'm awfully sorry. You see, Pinocchio, a lie keeps growing and growing until it's as plain as the nose on your face. She's right, Pinocchio. You better come clean. I'll never lie again. Honest, I won't. Please, Your Honor. I mean, uh, Miss Fairy, give him another chance. For my sake. Will you, huh? I'll forgive you this once. But remember, Pinocchio, a boy who won't be good just as well be made of wood. I'll be good. I, I promise. Very well. But this is the last time I can help you. Goodbye, Pinocchio. Goodbye, Sir Jiminy. Goodbye. 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 Oh, Oh, Jiminy, my nose. Yeah, it's back to normal again, and and you're free. Come on. I'm free. I'm free. Hooray! Yes, sir. There we were, free as the air and on our way back to Mr. Geppetto's. But little did we know, little did we know that even then, no the new deviltry was hatching. Down in a waterfront dive known as the Red Lobster Inn, Honest John and his crony Gideon sat drinking beer. With them was a companion, an evil, leering coachman. Hi, diddle dee an actor's life for me. It's great to be a celebrity, an actor's life for me. <laughs> and the dummy fell for it, eh, Gideon? <laughs> he still thinks we're his friends. <laughs> and did Stromboli pay? <laughs> Plenty. That shows you how low honest John will stoop. <laughs> now, Coachman, what's your proposition? Well, how would you blokes like to make some real money? Like this, maybe. <whistles> and whose throat do we have to... Uh... No, 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 nothing like that. You see, collecting stupid little boys. Stupid little boys? Yes, you know, the disobedient ones. What play you give from school? Ooh. And you see, listen. 
queen. And I takes them to Pleasure Island. Oh, <laughs> to Pleasure Island. Pleasure Island? The law. No, no, no. There's no risk. They never come back as boys. <laughs> now, here's where you come in. Well, yes, sir. I've got a coach load even get me. Oh, yes. We'll meet at the crossroads. Yes, sir. And no double crossing. Oh, no, no, no. And any good prospect you find, bring him to me. I knows what to do with him. <laughs> Hurry up, Pinocchio. We want to get home, don't we? Sure, and you know what, Jiminy? I'm turning over a new leaf. I'll make good this time. Well, you better. I will. I'm going to school. That's the stuff, Pinocchio. Come on, I'll race you home. All right. Ready. On your mark, set, go. Come on, Pinocchio. I'm well ahead of you. <laughs> Little boy, I'm afraid that you've tripped over my cage. Oh, please, Mr. Anderson, let me go. i got to be Jiminy Home. Just a minute, my little man. And how is the great actor today? I don't want to be an actor. Some boy was terrible. He was? But yeah, he locked me in a, in a cage. He did? Uh-huh, but I learned my lesson. I'm oh, going... Oh, my poor, poor boy, you must be a nervous wreck. Oh, well, we must diagnose. Come, Dr. Gideon, quick, your notebook. <laughs> now, let me feel your pulse, little man. Oh! <laughs> Bless my soul. Mm, 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 mm. Just as I thought. Bucolic semilunar conceptions of the flying trapezes. Mm, mm, mm. Now, hold your tongue. Hold your tongue and say hippopotamus. Hippopotamus. Uh huh. Trans- uh, compound transmission of the pandemonium. Even worse. Close your eyes. Now, what do you see? Nothing. Uh huh. I was afraid of that. That heart. Oh. Oh, my goodness. A palpitating syncopation of the Kiladella. Quick, Doctor, quick, that report. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now that makes it perfectly clear. Oh, my boy, my poor little boy. You, you are allergic. Allergic? Yes, and there's only one cure. A vacation on Pleasure Island. Pleasure Island? Pleasure Island, that happy land of carefree little boys where every day's a holiday. But I can't go. I... Why, of course you can go. Look, I'm giving you my ticket. Here you are, the Ace of Spades. Guy Spades? Oh, tut, 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 I insist. Your health comes first. Come, the coach departs at midnight. Come along now. I did it, Edie. It's Pleasure Island for me. Where every day is a holiday, and kids have nothing to do but play. Hi, Hi Diddly D. Ah, it's Lazy Mouth for me. Splendid, splendid. Pinocchio! Uh, Pinocchio! Now, where do you suppose he is? Pinocchio! Oh, there he is. He's with that fox again, and they're getting into a coach. It's a coach all filled with boys. Oh, well, here we go again. <laughs> Yeah. Hello, kid. My name's Lampwick. What's yours? Pinocchio. Ever been to Pleasure Island? Uh-uh. But Mr. Honest John gave me... Me neither. They say it's a swell joint. No school, no cops. You can tear to join a party and nobody says a word. Honest John gave Lump me... around, plenty to eat, plenty to drink. Yeah, and it's all free. Honest John... Boy, that's the place. I can hardly wait. Ho, ho, ho. There it is, boys. Just ahead of us, please. Pleasure Island. What a place. Ferris wheels, merry-go-round, hot dog stands, shoot the shoots, everything. All lit up like a million stars. And all for nothing, huh? Sounds fishy to me. Oh, hurry, 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 hurry. Boys, right here. Get your cake, pie, dill, pills, and ice cream. Eat all you can. Be a glutton. Stop yourself. It's all free, boys. It's all free. Hurry, 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 hurry. Oh, 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 it's the roughest, toughest time you ever seen. Come in and pick a fight, boys. Join the big free for all. Oh, boy, a rep. Come on, let's poke somebody in the nose. Why? Ah, uh, just for the fun of it. Okay, Larry, go on. Tobacco Row, Tobacco Row. Get your cigarettes and join the bagger. Come in and smoke your heads off. There's nobody here to stop you. Help yourself, boys. Help yourself, boys. Pinocchio! Say, what's happening around here? And where is everybody? I don't like the looks of this. Looks like a graveyard. Pinocchio! Hey! Where are you? Pinocchio! Okay, Pinocchio. Are we shooting full or ain't we? It's your shot. Oh, sure. Nice try, kid. Have another cigar. It's on a house. Another one? 
Okay. Atta boy. Now watch this shot. The eight ball in the side pocket. Hey, Lappy, where do you suppose all the kids went to? Ah, they're around here somewhere. What do you care? You're having a good time, ain't you? Uh huh, I sure am. Ah, uh, boy, this is a life up and open. <laughs> yeah, it sure is. Ah, uh, you smoke like me grandmother. Come on, take a big drag like this. Okay, Lappy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter, kid? Losing your grip? Pinocchio! Oh, hello, Jiminy. Oh, so this is where I find you. How do you ever expect to be a real boy? Oh, look at yourself. Smoking, playing pool. You're coming right home this minute. Hey, who's the beetle? Oh. Come here, you. Let me go. Put me down. Don't hurt him. He's my conscience. He tells me what's right and wrong. What? You mean to tell me you take orders from a grasshopper? Grasshopper? Look here, you impudent pup. It wouldn't hurt you to take orders from your grass of uh, 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 your conscience, if you have one. Yeah, 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 sure. Just screwball in the corner pocket. That's you, Beetle. Hey, hey let me out of here. <laughs> Why, you young hoodlum, I'll knock your block off. I'll tear you apart and put you back together again. I oh, tell you... don't hurt him, Jiminy. He's my best friend. Huh? Your best friend? And what am I? Just your conscience. Okay, that settles it. Goodbye. <laughs> But Jiminy... You buttered your bread, now sleep in it. But Jiminy, Lampwick says a guy only lives one. Lampwick? Huh. I've heard enough about him. Goodbye. Come on, come on, let him go. You're shot, Pinocchio. Goodbye, Jiminy. Lampwick. Huh. Lampwick. Well, that burns me up. After all I've tried to do for him, I've had enough of this. I'm taking the next boat out of here. <laughs> hey, hey, what goes on here? Where did all those donkeys come from? Hold on, you blokes. Keep it moving. Let those jack horses on the ship. Hey, coachman, where did all those donkeys come from? Come on, come on. Let's have another jack horse there. What's coming up? Hello, jack horse. And what's your name? <laughs> okay, you'll do. In you go. You lads, I'll bring a nice price. <laughs> all right, next. one coming up? And what might your name be? Alexander. Hmm, so you can talk, eh? Yes. Yes, sir. I want to go home to my mama. Take him back. He can still talk. Please, please. I don't want to be a donkey. Let me out of here. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, you boys have me just off of that of yourself. No fight for it. Boys? So that's what they brought them here for. They're changing them into donkeys. Oh, Pinocchio! Pinocchio! <laughs> to hear that beetle talk, you'd think something was going to happen to it. Conscious. Ah, fooey. Where does he get that stuff? How do you expect to be a real boy? But you think I look like a jackass? You sure do look, Lampwick. You're growing long ears and, and a tail. <laughs> hey. Hey, you laugh like a donkey. <laughs> hey, did that come out of me? I think so. Hey, what the... Hey, what's going on here? I got a horse and a long snoot. Oh, I'm a double cross. I'm turning into a donkey. Help. Help! Oh, no! Lampwick! Lampwick! Come back! Oh, my gosh! Pinocchio! Here, Jiminy! Oh, quick, Pinocchio. The kids, the boys, they're all turning into donkeys. They... Pinocchio! Where did you get those ears? What ears? Those ears! Oh, and you've got a tail! Me? Me? Oh, quick! we got to get out of here before you get any worse. Come on! Oh, 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 During our short intermission before Mr. DeMille brings you Act Three of Pinocchio, we turn the microphone over to Miss Libby Collins, our exclusive Hollywood reporter. What have you found for us this week, Libby? Well, as a matter of fact, I found there's quite a lot of truth in the saying, the Colonel's lady and Judy O'Grady are sisters under the skin. Mm, that needs explaining, Libby. Well, you know, women are knitting from Maine to California these days. And believe it or not, the Hollywood actresses are just as enthusiastic about it as women anywhere else. I've seen Joan Crawford knitting between scenes on the set of Strange Cargo. It's one of Myrna Loy's favorite occupations. And whenever Rosalind Russell has a free moment on her hands, out comes the knitting bag. Movie stars and extras, script girls and secretaries, they're all doing it. I think Sally here has caught the fever, too. I saw her knitting away at something just the other day. What's it going to be, Sally? Why, it's a sweater, Mr. Ruick, a white one. It looked pretty nice to me. But uh, it's going to take a lot of washing to keep it white, isn't it? <laughs> oh, that doesn't worry me a bit, Mr. Ruick. 
It'll be easy to do with Lux Flakes. The same kind of care leading motion picture studios give their washable. Talk about stirs under the skin. Motion picture studios use Lux Flakes. So do women everywhere. Whether they knit sweaters or buy them. Or get them for Christmas presents. Those sweaters deserve nice care. Don't use hot water on them. Don't rub them with cake soap. And don't use soaps with harmful alkali. Just squeeze your sweaters gently through lukewarm Lux Sud. That's good sound advice. And it goes for the other nice woolens people get for Christmas. Like socks and mittens and scarves. If they're safe in water alone. There's no harmful alkali in gentle Lux Flakes to hurt any color or fabric that's safe in plain water. When you use Lux, you'll find it so pure, a little goes a long way. Lux is thrifty. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. We continue with Pinocchio. The flames mount higher in the fireplace, and Jiminy Cricket's excitement rises with the blaze. He climbs to the top of the brass ant stand, and there, waving his umbrella about his head, he continues this strange tale. What a situation. Trapped on Pleasure Island, and Pinocchio's ears growing longer by the second. I grabbed him by the hand. Through the streets we ran, down toward the boat. Then they saw us. They came after us, shouting and shooting and shooting and shouting. We ran up an alley. We jumped over a fence. I could hear them pounding along behind us. They were coming nearer and nearer. And then at last we reached the shore. Jump, fight, and we jumped into the water, swimming like mad, and we escaped. I'm on you. Woo. Really, all oh, in. Well... But we got home, and I hid Pinocchio's long ears under his hat, and we walked up the path toward the house. Gosh, certainly feels good to be back on dry land. <laughs> yes, it certainly does. Well, here's the house. <laughs> Door's locked. Father! Father, I'm home! Uh, we're home, Mr. Geppetto. Father, it's me, Pinocchio! I'm home to stay! Wait a second. I'll jump up and look in the window. Well, he ain't there. He's gone? Yeah. And Figaro, too. Oh, gosh, maybe something awful's happened to him. Well, don't worry, son. He probably hasn't gone far. Say, look. Look at that star. It's the same one. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and that bird flying around up there. Why, he's got a piece of paper in his beak. He, he's dropped it. Get it, Jiminy. I got it. What is it, Jiminy? Why, it's a message. Well, what's it say? It's about your father. Oh, where? Why, uh, 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 it says here uh, that he went looking for you and, and he was swallowed by a whale. Swallowed uh, by a whale? A whale? Oh, my goodness. Oh, he's... no, Pinocchio, he's alive. Uh, he is. Uh, oh, God, where? Well, oh. he, he's inside of a whale at, at the bottom of the sea. Bottom of the sea? Uh-huh. Hey, where are you going? I'm going to find him. Oh, but Pinocchio, are you crazy? Don't you realize he's in a whale? i got to go to him. Oh, now, wait. Listen, son. Uh, this monstro, I've heard of him. He, why, why, he's a whale of a whale. He, he swallows whole ships alive. I don't care. Hey, what's that rock for? I'm going to jump off this cliff with it. Then I'll sink fast. Oh, my goodness. Goodbye, Jiminy. Goodbye. Oh, no. I may be live bait down there, but I'm with you. Come on. Let's go. Look up. I never knew it was so cold inside a whale's stomach. <laughs> here we are, fishing for days in here, and not a bite. The whale must be asleep, I guess. I never thought it would end this way, Figaro, starving to death in the belly of a whale. That poor little Pinocchio, he was such a good boy. 
It's hopeless, but there isn't a fish left. If the monster doesn't wake up soon, I, I'm afraid we are done for. Well, what was that? The monster's waking up. Maybe he's getting hungry. If he is, then we'll have fish. Yes, his mouth is open. He's feeding. Then he comes, he grows tuna fish. when that whale sneezed, and that raft shot out like a cannonball. But that didn't end it, no sir. If you sneeze once, you gotta sneeze again, and that's what he did. He started to inhale. What a curse. The raft went flying back into his mouth, but it didn't stay there. But the next thing you know, that second sneeze came. I could feel it coming. The whale was all red in the face. He puffed away up, and then he let go. The zoom time. Out came the rest again, and this time the monster was sore. He started chasing him, fire in his eyes, his teeth flashing and his tail swinging. Pinocchio and Mr. Geppetto paddled like fury. Oh, the shore was only a few yards away, but the whale was gaining. Inch by inch, foot by foot, closer and closer. His breath was hot on the... Uh, the hot on the... Uh, oh, he was very close. And just ahead was a big cliff. The raft swung in between two rocks. The whale right behind him. He went straight for the cliff, head on, and he hit the cliff. Where was Pinocchio and, and Mr. Geppetto and, and Figaro? And when I got there, old Mr. Geppetto was kneeling beside the little wooden boy. Pinocchio was... he was dead. My boy. My brave little boy. Oh, well, gosh. Don't cry, Mr. Geppetto. He, he was brave and we got to be brave too. My little wooden boy. He gave his life. That I might live. <laughs> Prove yourself brave, truthful, and unselfish, and someday you will be a real boy. <laughs> Awake, Pinocchio. Awake. Father, what you crying for? Because 
You're dead, Pinocchio. No, no, I'm not. Yes, yes, you are. Now, now lie down. But, Father, I'm alive, see? And, and I'm, I'm real. Oh, I'm a real boy. Uh, your life. And you are a real boy. Ooh, a real boy. <laughs> oh, Pinocchio, my dream is really true at last. Oh, gosh. Thank you, Miss Blue Fairy. He deserved to be a real boy and wealth. A bed for Sir Jiminy. Oh, and you didn't forget. Well, will you look at that? A badge. Official conscience. Well, I'll be... Oh, oh, and it's solid gold, too. Gosh. Thank you, my lady. Like a boat out of the blue. Suddenly, it comes in view. Upon a star, your dreams DeMille. Here in the Lux Radio Theater, we have regarded it as quite an honor to present Walt Disney's Pinocchio for the first time. And we wish Mr. Disney a highly merited success with his new picture when his new picture is brought to the screen in a few weeks. Next Monday night, we bring a fine actor back to this microphone, Mr. Herbert Marshall. Our play is Sorrel and Son, adapted from the popular novel by Warwick Deeping. It's a profoundly moving drama of the sacrifice a father made for his son. Karen Morley will also appear with Herbert Marshall in Sorrel and Son. In your living rooms tonight, some who are there only on Christmas, and I know their presence has made it a happier day for you. Still others may have joined your family circle through the medium of the Lux Radio Theater because they knew that you at home were listening. So to those of our radio family who are at home and to those who are far from home, we send our greetings and our hope that you've enjoyed all the blessings of this Christmas day and our hope, too, that your prayers will join ours for the restoration of that blessing of 1,900 years ago. Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Herbert Marshall in Sorrel and Son with Karen Morley. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Our music was directed by Louis Silver. And your announcer has been Melville Rose. This was the Balloon Broadcasting System. Well, that's it. Another episode of the radio shows young Americans love the best. I'm River Gibbs, inviting you to join me next time, right here.